Hello and welcome back. I'm Tyler Edlin. This is Brush Sauce Theater. And in this episode, I'll be talking about three tips that you can use to start painting environments. So for my first tip, I recommend looking up historically who has done it well. And for me, I always look toward the Hudson River School painters. As I see, once I Google, uh, Google that, uh, you get a whole list of artists right here. You know, of course, when they lived and stuff. Uh, shortcut from here, you can click on images and get a wide array of them from the various artists. Now, if you want to do more research and, and kind of find your personal favorites, you can go on and, and to do that. There's obviously quite a variety to choose from and um, they all have their own kind of themes and techniques and to just kind of copy, uh, copy and replicate what they did one for one and try to understand why they made the decisions that they have is a great place to start. Secondly, my, my next kind of favorite ass, uh, assignment or uh, exercise to do would be to join a, um, and do a plein air or virtual plein air painting. And that basically means kind of like painting on site. Pop, popular today, you know, especially within the social media, are groups like the, uh, the virtual plein air uh, group, you know, which I believe is open to anybody. And basically people are using like Google Earth and stuff. They find random kind of places on the map. They click it and then you do a painting of it. Uh, you know, in your own style, your own kind of way to represent that. Uh, as we see, have a great example here from Maromi. You, you could often click on the link; they like to provide it, and what you get is uh, you know the original view that they use. And sometimes you can move and rotate them, so the artist probably screen caps this, takes it into Photoshop, and uh, you know does well, you know more often than not a really nice painting. So my suggestion would be to do something similar: either go outside to actually paint, or use the virtual group, post it, get tips and feedbacks from the community, and just feel your way through it to see where you stand. Um, often, in, in, in this regard, some artists such as Jeremy Fenske, which is one of my favorite ones, he has a YouTube channel, um, you know, which I love to promote for him, uh, where he paints and does demonstrations of such thing. And I have two of his samples uh, up on Photoshop now. He did this, this beautiful um, kind of rendition of this scene here. So just, And he has this full video process right on his channel. I highly recommend you go check it out. Uh, and so if you don't know how to even begin something like this, now you do just check them out uh, my next and uh, my third kind of favorite assignment would be to is almost like a combination of things and that is to kind of take uh, two different master studies and aesthetically kind of combine them you know in regards to kind of like structure and see if you can make a hybrid environment that kind of takes the principles or or various elements from each one so here i kind of took the idea of a cracked dry valley but i wanted to do it with water and i obviously uh, extended some of the mountains and forms and added trees in it so yeah it's a bit of a perfect hybrid but the, you know the trick with this is to kind of just figure out the planes the forms and structurally how everything can work all right, so now I'll do a little bit of a quick demo to get you started on your environment uh, sketches and paintings. So we're going to use this photo of Yosemite, which, side note, this is where I proposed to my now wife. Worked out great. Go epic on proposals, and she'll say yes. Uh, and anyways, we're, <laughs> we're getting to use this photo here. And we're going to, we want to dissect the anatomy of the, the geography of the land, basically, and break things down to the major shapes. The easiest way to do that is what is the sky versus what is not the sky. So I'm essentially kind of grouping this out in a very rough way and I'm using the biggest, thickest brush I can, keeping the canvas very, very small and just kind of squinting at it to look for major shapes. And I'm not going to go one for one with the shapes, but I'm perhaps even going to keep it a little more simple. I covered this a lot a uh, few YouTubes ago. I forget which it is, but uh, <laughs> it's it's a few back if you want to look up more than that. So, I'm um, much like a sculptor. I'm chiseling the shapes out of the major landmarks within a scene like this using just two values: a light and a bit one of that's darker. So, a light and a dark. From there, we can subdivide those two core shapes and essentially add a little bit of complexity. So, if I want to group this as a darker value, I'll just go a notch darker on the on the uh, color picker, not huge contrasts. So if I'm just blocking out the shapes, I, you know, I go, I go like 10% darker and I can start sketching 
foreground elements in this case. Even though it's light in the foreground and I have light coming through, I'm just kind of structurally sketching this out and, and breaking down the anatomy, which is a great way to learn structure and how to simplify your values for your painting. So I, you know, I, th I throw it through trees in. I don't go crazy with it. Then I decide to select the sky to work in some of the, the shapes in the background. You can add clouds. I can add further background mountains. And the trick to doing this is keeping that value grouping. So if I'm really light back there, all I'm going to do is go 10% darker to kind of sketch in the shapes, just shapes about the mountain. So you've got to shut off the other side of your brain to, to really dissect you know, the rocks, the plains, the hills, and just look at shapes. And... That's really the secret to this. So I, you know, I add a little bit of a gradient at the top because the sky is a little darker up there. And using the same type of brush, whether it's clouds, trees, or again, rocks, planes, I can just sketch and imply those with the same simple shape brush. I'm not necessarily getting caught up at this stage with, you know, getting fancy brushes without figuring out, you know, is it soft or it's hard. I'm just looking for shapes. And that is the best way to start to learn environments, in my opinion. Either doing this with master studies, using your own photography, going out and, you know, doing plein air paintings. It's just an invaluable, simple approach that's worked, you know, for centuries. So why not today? Now I see I do have a nice strong light source coming in from the right, hitting that shape on the left. So Again, I'm not looking necessarily at the anatomy of the rock, but I'm looking for the shapes of light. And again, I'm not going one for one. I'm just embellishing what I see and kind of implying what, what's in front of me just to add a little bit of that directness and to keep it simple. So that means light and dark on every kind of plane. Only need to really do two values in each little group that I have. And uh, that's just, you know, it's all in the name of the game of keeping it simple. We don't need to... Uh, I think that's one of the core mistakes a lot of us make when we just begin, and that's we tend to overcomplicate things way too quickly. I see it in my own students' work all the time. And even if I say keep it simple, you know, things tend to get a little complicated too soon. So do like series and sets of these almost by the dozen. Make a whole thumbnail sheet, maybe nine, maybe 12 of them all lined up. Grab different photos from wherever and just do, you know, uh, little sketches like this to learn the, you know, basically deconstructing the forms, the land masses, and in, in some cases, even the light. I could make this kind of match the photo more one for one in terms of the light and the dark if I wanted to just lighten everything up at the very end and, you know, make it that, that unified sense of that daylight. But um, this, this exercise is not necessarily about that. It's more or, le more or less just about the structure of, of the scene, of the comp, of the shot design and of the major forms and shapes. Again, if I, I wanted to approach lighting for this, I'd do it more or less at this stage after I have the major elements blocked in. And, you know, right here, I just group a few more trees. And I'm not looking for one-to-one -one tree representation. You know, for me, in a, in a comp like this, a tree some sketches going vertically. <laughs> some, some not sketches, but some lines. And then, you know, from here, if I wanted to add and glaze more lighting into the scene, it, it's, it can be done in seconds. But, you know, I'd keep something like this pretty quick, pretty simple. Keep it maybe around 10 to 12 minutes so you don't get caught up in the unnecessaries and just move on. Uh, and But that's the best, honestly, the best way I would recommend anybody who hasn't um, started to do environment paintings, maybe is intimidated by it and they don't know where to start to jump in, try these three exercises and practices and you'll be sure painting epic landscapes in no time. Anyways, guys, this has been fun. Let me know what you think. If you liked it, subscribe. If you have questions for me to cover on future episodes, leave a note below in the comments. Take care. Thank you for watching my video. If you found it helpful, please leave me a like. If you want to help me out, please share it with your friends. I'm also on Facebook where I have a subscribe button where you can get newsletters and discount info. I'm also on Twitter where I update and post images almost regularly. If you want a chance to mingle and meet other like-minded uh, individuals such as yourself, join the Brush Sauce community. Free and open to anyone, of course, through the Google+. Plus. And finally, if you'd like to inquire about my mentorship program, head over to tyleredlinart.com, click on the mentorship tab, scroll through, read over some of the guidelines, and feel free to check out uh, several of my testimonial videos on my YouTube channel itself.